guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording Saturday, February 24th. Uh, with plenty of Celtic stuff. Obviously, Celtics Knicks play tonight as we're recording this. By the time you hear this, they will have played already. We're going to talk about that in just a minute now. But uh, we are here. Sam, how you doing? I haven't talked to you today. It's weird. I usually like talk to you I more than once throughout the day. Freezing. <laughs> it's cold. What, one of those days is just freezing in this house. Uh, I mean, I don't know. The heat should be on. Mm. It's not, not really my. <laughs> it's not, not my post. That happened for you. Tough. Um, yeah, like I said, we'll get into the Celtics next. I will say few housekeeping items very quickly because we ha- we never say this one. Uh, spoiler alert. No, what's popping today? No one entered. So I'm going to say at the start of the video, mm. comment what's popping on the video for a chance to win a $10 gift card to Inpop Nito. Again, comment below the video. What's popping for a chance to be entered uh, on the wheel Win a $10 Inpop Nito gift card. If you've won already, you can't enter again, but. If you'd like a chance, please do that. Uh, and outside of that, leave a comment. like. Uh, yeah, just comment and <laughs> just leave a like and subscribe. Uh, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, apparently, there's analytics where if I say it sooner in the video, more people will do it. So, like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Uh, anyways, let's uh, let's talk about Celtics Knicks now. All right, we are here post game after Celtics Knicks, as you can tell on YouTube by this. Big grin on Sam's face. It was a positive result for the Celtics last night. Took home a 116-102 win over the New York Knicks despite a hot start from Jalen Brunson. Big game. Big win for the Celtics. Really good win for the Celtics regardless of how shorthanded the Knicks are. Um, They handled their business, and that's what you want to see. What a fantastic night this is. (laughs) I mean... The circle jerk that has been <laughs> the Knicks are back. Oh, the Knicks are so great. Oh, the Knicks are going to beat the Celtics. It, it, it's not looking so hot. I, I understand that there were players missing. Uh, one of, of them course. being Randall, who's going to fumble around and probably make things harder on Jalen Brunson when he's back. Uh, but the Celtics fucked around for a half. Still went into the break with a lead. Shout out to J- did your dad win? No, Tatum didn't have twenty five. Uh, no, I don't think so. No, Tatum had tw- nineteen. Actually, slow yeah. day for him. Yeah, good day for him though. He, he played day. well. But anyways, going to the half, barely up. Disaster end of the half where they get blocked and then give up a basket the other way. Four point swing. Uh, and then they come out in the third quarter as they have been. Uh, All the games. This win streak, yeah. And they said that's enough of that. Made all the shots. And then carried it over enough into the fourth quarter where this game wasn't close again. Very proud of them. I like the way they handled this game. They didn't get flustered. I I hated that they gave up a zillion offensive rebounds. I do have to complain. Uh, Did not like that one bit. Tweeted about Mm -hmm. it on the pod account. Everybody seemed to agree. That's the only thing I ask. Because early in this game, the Knicks were not missing. Not, I mean, the Celtics really didn't miss a lot today at all. It, you know, the Knicks were making some tough threes early in the game, though. I know what you're talking about. And then they would finally fucking miss. And then, lo and behold, the ball is in Hartenstein's hands. I feel like a lot of people are... possession. I know. Finish. I feel like a lot of people are going to jump at Kristaps for that. I don't really think it was fully his fault. Like... Hartenstein, that is what Hartenstein does. That is why he's in the league. Like, that is his thing. He is a great offensive rebounder. He hustles. Kristaps is focusing all his effort onto boxing him out. He's going to get a hand in there. Celtics needed to send more guys crashing glass. And they did make the adjustment eventually. There were some scattered throughout the second half. But they were much better um, at grabbing those offensive rebounds in the second half. Um, So credit to them for making that adjustment. Uh, Brunson scored 34, but outside of that, no one else really had a huge game um, for the Knicks. And I think that looked to be the Celtics game plan going in. They were just kind of letting them cook. They were just saying, all right, Brunson, you beat us. No one else is, right? That's what uh, it and, it was, like. and, it, and it was frustrating to watch in the first quarter when he was doing that. <laughs> he was cooking. Um, and then he did carry it over into the second half and make some tough buckets. But in the end, they were able to contain everybody else, um, relatively speaking. I mean, Josh Hart had a, had a pretty good night. Um DiVincenzo made his threes, but nothing else. So th- there were some things in there. Miles McBride played all right, but th- I-, I think they did a pretty good job of defending. Like I tweeted at the end of the first quarter, Jalen Brunson was cooking them. It felt like they were playing frustrated and they gave up 26 points in the first quarter. Like that's not a terrible defense. That's pretty bang average. Oh. So that is, that is fine. And 13 of them were Brunson. So 
you take that. Um, they stayed solid. They gave up 11 or sorry, they gave up 15 offensive rebounds. They grabbed 11 of their own. Um, however, of those 15 offensive rebounds, they gave up. Um, I'm just checking my math here. I guess seven were in the first half. So they did give up a decent amount. Um, five were in the third quarter and then in the fourth quarter, shut it I mean, down. Knicks four of them came right off the three. rip out of the break. It, it was, Hey, I really would like to see the Celtics rebound better in the second half. And then they were like, watch this. And they, I said, think that's what it was. All the offensive rebounds. I think the second half offensive rebounds were amplified. Like it felt like they did a much better job because when they gave up one, they gave up like three on the same possession. And so it was kind of like, which yeah, like not saying that's not frustrating, mark but of the third quarter, they probably gave up two for the rest of the game. So you yeah. can't complain too much. They did tighten it up. I was very concerned when they came out and that happened right away. I was rip shit mm-hmm. pissed. But overall, good Celtics win, good response. Like you said, it was de- definitely like a, hey, Jalen Brunson will get his, but nobody else is doing anything. And worked. It did. Shout the, out. Credit. The injuries caught up to them in that sense because they were able to be like, all right. I, I didn't love the drop coverage. Got to tell you. Really? despise the drop i i understood it because you saw what would happen PTSD. you saw what they would happen when they pressed up on brunson though they were just like he was just getting to the line like he would just he get was a just foul call. throwing himself and so exactly exactly so like if if Kristaps had pressed up any further and played switch and like played at the level he would have just gotten fouls and so i didn't mind the drop coverage because like the math eventually evened out obviously the celtics just shot the shit out of the ball but giving up middies to Brunson versus generating open threes in there and like it's it's gonna balance out and I, I'd rather give up those shots than anything else. Um Andrew's gotta be pissed though. Sorry Andrew. Man has to be <laughs> devastated. He just spent the whole month in, in our comments saying how great the Knicks are. I will and they lose by double digits in a laugher of the second half. I will devastated. Say, if it's any consolation Andrew technically this is kind of a Knicks podcast today so you can have some sort of yeah <laughs> no, this is this is the podcast. You should comment about the Knicks, actually. Yeah, let's hear it. You, you see the banner at the top. Let's let's hear it. My um, favorite of all the comments was <laughs> that Brad Stevens was a bad GM. Is that what Andrew said? He said the Knicks GM is better than Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens, who has not missed on a move. Yeah, that's special stuff. That's special stuff from him. Um, we can talk about the Celtics too, though. Jalen Brown was superior to Jalen. You now have to spell Jalen with the Y. That's the rule now mm. because of this game. Thoughts? I, I think I think that should be the rule. But Jalen, 30 points, 13 of 24, 3 of 9, 8 rebounds, 3 assists, uh, 0 turnovers in this game. Dude, he was making every fucking shot. <laughs> he didn't miss anything. Like, like in that, what was it, the second quarter where he was just like – tearing everything up like dude <laughs> he was making the toughest middies i've ever seen making great shots at the rim he was flexing on him he was playing defense he was locking up brunson like credit jail on this one he had a couple like what are you doing plays like he missed Derek white on a pass around he uh let miles mcbride just kind of walk by him he uh there's one other thing that i forget where he took a weird shot or something and it just stalled the play but the, there's no real complaints because he was the reason they were able to overcome a bunch of Knicks runs. His scoring in this game was ridiculous. So lots of credit to JB. JB was excellent. He loves to play in New York. I'll tell you that. All I could think about is that 44, 45 point game he had to open yeah. the season the year under Ime. Granted, it went into double overtime, but he was excellent throughout that entire game. He came out today, drilled back-to-back threes to start the game, and then it was just on. He did a great job of driving, got to the basket. He was wildly efficient. I think he shot, what, 70% for the game. He just picked his spots. This has been what we've seen from Jalen over the last month. He's just being very careful with what he's doing on the offensive end, and it's really, really shown up. Can't be happier with the way he's played. He's really starting to buy into what's going on with his team. Tonight was a bit of an anomaly in terms of the amount of shots he took, but it was a night where Jalen should take 24 shots. Jalen had it. He was cooking. Why would he not take the most shots on the team when he is clearly firing on all cylinders? The rest of the lineup fell right into place. It was incredible. Only 15 shots for Tatum, 11 for Porzingis, 10 for Holiday, 8 for White, and nobody else took more than 7. Horford had a pretty yeah. decent game off the bench. Horford but was good. The way that this team can just say, all right, 
this is what we're doing today. It doesn't mean what we're it's going to be what we're doing against Philly on Tuesday is remarkable because it works. That's the mm-hmm. beauty of having all these guys on your team, a super team, if you will. But it's a super team that just added the cherries on top because Jalen and Jason have been playing together for years. But Holiday and Porzingis, two guys that have been around the league, Holiday's won a championship. He's been able to see what it takes, and Porzingis is just happy to be on a team that doesn't suck. They are willing to instill the sacrifice into this group, and everybody is fully embracing it. Credit those guys, credit the Jays, credit Missoula, because Missoula preaches this shit all the time, and they are all in. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like like you said, I wrote about it after the Bulls game. Their ability to – anybody can take over at any night. Like, obviously, JB, I think, was the star in the show. He's probably the best player in this game, but – this was a great fucking Tatum game too. Like he, he shot two of eight three, so he didn't have a great shooting night, but outside of that five of seven from the field, six assists, two steals and one block. His defense was nuts. This dude was all over the place on defense. Um, comfortable taking 15 shots. He played 43 minutes in this one. He played almost the entire game, which is far more than anybody else. He played eight more minutes than the next highest Celtic, which was Drew holiday. who also played very well. Um, he gets a ton of credit T- Tatum in this one for, the way he handled himself on both ends of the court. He had six assists, but they said on the broadcast industry, he had a ton of hockey assists too. Like it was a lot of, I'm going to drive, pass it out and create an open look. That one play I posted it to Twitter so I can pull it up pretty easily. Um, This was the play of the game. And you already know what I'm pulling up. This play right here is what the Celtics. I think you at least hope the Celtics should be able to do on every single possession of every single game, which might not be completely realistic, but just watch this play. Watch this. Watch this. Every time. Eric White. Yeah. Eric White brings the ball up, drives on two, draws two, kicks it to the corner. Jalen swings to Tatum, who draws a a jump, kicks it to KP on the wing, kicks it to Drew Holiday in the corner. Bang! Three. Open three. Th- this, this ball this movement, amazing. Tremendous display of patience from everybody involved. Derek White yeah. has the instinct to push the pace on the fast break. He goes what one on three initially in the paint, one on four technically. Forces the issue, gets Hartenstein to collapse, and then from there, the Celtics just pick him apart. Tatum, instead of electing to fire up a three, makes the extra move, gets to the free throw line, and then New York is completely in rotation, and they're fucked. Mm-hmm. There's a and lot it of finds that the man that doesn't miss from the corner. Mm-hmm. Corner three. Drew Holiday had a great night as well in this one, dude. <laughs> Everybody in the Celtics played the role beautifully. Jalen Brown was the guy with his scoring, but everyone played well. Derek White hit his threes, six assists, six for Drew Holiday, too. What I'm most impressed was, uh, or another thing I was impressed with, I should say, in this game, is something that carried over from the Bulls game, in a sense. So, in the Bulls game, you saw Springer Nikola Vucevic. No, no, no. Imagine it was like the two minutes of Jaden Springer. Yeah. No. Uh, first half against the Bulls, Vucevic murdered him, right? Killed him, right, in the post. Yep. Second half, they come out, keep him out of the paint, throw more bodies at him, adjust the defensive game plan. First quarter in this one, Jalen Brunson, ton of bodies, right? They drop coverage, everything. Second quarter, they're up on him. They're up, up everywhere. Like in his grill, they might not be complete being, they might not have played completely at the level. They might've still been in a pseudo drop, but they were throwing a lot more pressure at Jalen Brunson. They were flashing different, you know, coverages at him. The Celtics ability to let something, not necessarily let it hurt them in the first quarter, but notice the one thing that's beating them and completely eradicate it. Like, Jalen Brunson had 13 points in the first quarter and he finished with 34, but like in the second half, let me see if I'm a moron or I'm just talking out of my ass. I guess he had 15 in the second half, but he shot five of 12. Like they, they they completely mitigated his efficiency in the second half. And if that's not a thing, like Celtics in the second half outscored the Knicks uh, 54 to 44 by 10 points. And then the fourth quarter, uh, I'm sorry, the third quarter, it was, Four of nine from Brunson, but everyone else was like, meh. Saw the shot 72 69 and outscored him by nine. Like, every quarter, they, they it's completely, not that hard, really. They, <laughs> shut the fuck up. They, they completely changed their defensive looks or threw enough different looks to make him less effective. And that's what allowed them to sort of pump, uh, get ahead on top of shooting 70% from three does help. I'll say that it does, it helps a little bit. Um, but I don't think that's a fluke because they got open looks and, and, they were missing some open looks early on, or, or it felt. I guess they. Wow, well, I guess they weren't. Or the second quarter. Sorry, yeah. They. I guess they only shot one of four, but it felt like they didn't take generate a lot of threes in the first half, like comparatively to what they usually shoot. Well, they had like thirty six paint points really 
early in this game. So they did a great job of getting themselves inside. Jalen got a lot of his points, whether it was from baseline cuts, baseline drives, or fadeaways in the post. He was doing a great job of like not settling for threes. Not to say I thought the threes were bad at all today. I know that's not it's actually the opposite of what you were saying. They didn't take any threes in the first half. But they were very careful in everything they did. And it was almost the perfect Celtics game, except they didn't rebound. Because everything was just like read the room. Drives are working. Keep driving. Oh, now the threes are falling. Okay, great. We're going to continue to move the ball. Shoot yeah. Like Porzingis' threes were so timely. They were all open by his standards, meaning nobody was at his eye level. And they just bought him down right through. No problem. And he, I thought Porzingis was rough in this game for a while, whether you want to attribute it to the rebounding. I just thought, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, he was getting, like, the refs in his head. He had the two defensive three seconds, which the second one was very, very fast. Uh, he he picked up – what do you have, four or five fouls in this game? Like, he he was a focal point. He, yeah. he wasn't super impactful early in this game. He did turn it up big time in the second half, and he made his presence known to close out the game. He had a big block on uh, McBride on the dunk there. So – I was happy with the way he responded as a team. Just impressed. Cause like you said, this was a game they could have just continued to have things go wrong because it wasn't pretty. And I had the tweet typed out and I didn't hit send. Cause I was like, well, I don't know. Besides the rebounding, I'm actually pretty satisfied with this. Yeah. But I it was didn't... like, it feels like the Celtics are trying to lose because they were like... interesting possessions. It felt like the Bulls game to me. It felt like, it was like the Celtics were playing better about ba- yeah the Celtics were playing better basketball the Nick like early on especially the Knicks were making some ridiculously contested threes and the Celtics while they were getting in the paint they weren't generating the number of threes that they usually like to get to like I mean in this game the Celtics got shot fewer shots by one they shot three fewer threes they shot four fewer free throws and they got six fewer rebounds and they won the game right like that's not something that happens I like I that that'd be I'd be surprised if that's happened more than three times this season, five times this season. Um, I, yeah, it just felt like the Celtics were playing a better brand of basketball. Like I thought the defense was okay outside of the rebounding and for what it's worth, like a good chunk of those, like I would say half were send more bodies at them, but the other half were like three point shots that went awry or, or Isaiah Hartenstein just like over the backing on Chris stops to get a hand on the ball. So as frustrating as it was, it also felt like some of them were unavoidable and at least like five of them weren't separate possessions. They were on the same exact possession. The Celtics just couldn't get their head out of their ass. And so I don't think it was as big of an issue as the 15 suggests. Not saying it wasn't a problem because it was a fucking problem. Like it was the reason the Knicks were in the game for the first half um, and early in the third. But I don't know. I just and maybe it's just the, the fact that I think that maybe they play me. at such a high level. Um, yeah, maybe you're too negative. I'm too positive, And we need to, I mean, that's kind of the theme, I suppose. But I don't know. It just felt like they were playing. The process was pretty good for them for the majority of the game. I mean, I, I do agree. Like, the only thing I was like, I hate this was the rebounds. Like, I, I was literally about to tweet some Definitely. negative shit. And I was like, nope, not going to do it. Nope. Wow. <laughs> that's progress. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I was just like, ah, I don't know how fair that is. I mean, I was pissed about the rebounds, but like everything else was okay. Good mm-hmm. focus. Like overall, I was I was okay with what they did, man. Mm-hmm. I thought Al Horford was really like a low key. He MVP was awesome today. Made some great awesome. cuts. Created his shot a couple times. He fought on the glass. He had four offensive boards. Like mm-hmm. he came to play. And and if some he's able to give too. him that, you said what? Old school Al too. Brought out the post moves. Like that's what I mean. Got in there. He was creating. Yeah. His own shot. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I see. <clears throat> Big time. Um, yeah. I mean. If he's going to give him that in the playoffs, you know how great that is to have off the bench? It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, this was a good game. I texted Sam. It didn't matter at all. I thought the refs were questionable at times. It, it didn't. It, it Scott genuinely Foster, didn't matter. Hey, listen, they had that, <laughs> Scott Foster might have had a bad game. It genuinely didn't matter in the end. So um, it's not a complaint. Just, just like. You're really calling three seconds? They do that in every possession. Everybody does that on every single fucking possession. You just call two. And the moving screens, moving screens for the past two games. Like, what are we doing? Like, as if Isaiah Hartenstein isn't moving on every screen he sets. Like, I, I, I don't get it. But good game form uh, by the Celtics. 
good Sam Hauser game. He didn't play a ton either. Um, but he he big looked boy big boy first quarter from Hauser. Big you rebound tweeted about the big boy boards. I thought yeah. overall, I mean, he made a good cutting three, and then he had a couple rebounds that were in traffic. You know when this game I think was sealed though. When this I, I knew this game was over when Peyton Pritchard came fucking soaring in like yeah. Superman to grab an offensive rebound. They missed again. Horford tipped it out, and those two just battled the whole possession to make sure it ended in a bucket. As soon as Horford and Pritchard won them a possession, I was like, Yeah, the next one goes. We're done. Get it, get him out of here. Um, so <clears throat> credit to the Celtics, man. This is this is a good win, regardless of the injuries. That's all injured, and all the Knicks fans are gonna scream, but they handled their business. It's not like they got squeaked out a one point win that they fought on. They went down a little in the first half, had a little scare early in the third, and then fucking took off and just mm. killed them. And so that's what you need. Imagine to how do. many they win by if they wear the right jerseys. <laughs> it's true. Not asking the right questions here. Uh, any final thoughts? Yeah, Doris Burke bad. Really? Yeah, she had to throw in a Jalen left hand comment. <laughs> kind of over the left hand that. stuff. Yeah, it is. It, it's the it's the layup, as they say. Uh, whatever. I didn't think they were. T- it was Turn terrible broadcast tonight. <laughs> no, I mean, anytime you get Mike Breen, it's fine. But you know, as as the tweet goes, she was making her presence known. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, uh, let's throw it over to the rest of the pod. All right, we're back. Hopefully, it was a pleasant post game. Better. I've we'll been. have to see. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, Andrew wasn't hounding us. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be there in the pregame. But we getting can get into some Celtic stuff, uh, starting with the debuts of Xavier Tillman and Jaden Springer, uh, both of whom played uh, against the Bulls the other night, um, and both of whom have since talked about making their v- debuts. Xavier Tillman got some points. Uh, he scored a bucket, got a block. Jaden Springer took a shot, missed the shot. But both have spoken about what they're expecting um from boston tillman uh this was i pulled this from an article from bobby manning at celtics blog and cls shout out my role here as far as what i can do is definitely bringing energy crashing glass defending at a high level and getting those guys open with screens as far as my stint and stuff like that we're a stay ready team and so that what we'll, that's what we'll do um springer said missoula hasn't come out and said anything exactly about our roles that's just how the league is it's basketball we're on a great team here so you got to stay ready whenever your number is called and be there to help your teammates any way you can being able to come here it was great that was all the good news for me i'm feeling good missoula also said something along those lines i think the game the rest of the season will dictate opportunities for that right now it's about staying ready getting used to our schemes and offense and defense and when the time is right making sure they're ready to play making sure they're ready to execute so it's just patience so it doesn't sound like we're going to be getting 20 minutes a night of either of them however they're both uh as has been the phrase all season staying ready yeah i mean they certainly seem to be taking their time with these guys in they might have brought him in for a long-term type thing. I don't know. Tillman seems more of a help now type guy, even though I don't think he's going to outst anybody out of the lineup. Maybe Cornette, if he's playing really well, but Cornette played well on Thursday. So tough start for that camp. Um, as for Springer, he's always been a, this guy might be able to help us down the line type of player when they picked him up. He's only 21. He plays good defense. If they can get him to figure out how to do anything on offense it's going to be a big help and he'll be able to give them minutes on a cheap contract in the years to come but it's good that they're not really rushing these guys and these guys seem to be buying into the part where they don't really get minutes and their job is just to be ready when their name is called because they could have their name called i mean tillman for sure could i don't know how much springer's gonna play in the playoffs but i could see tillman getting minutes if they play the right team like he could play milwaukee and play Giannis or have to try and uh, hang with uh, Lopez in the paint. I just don't know if Tillman, I I mean, uh, Springer will have that same kind of fortune. I agree. I think both are capable players. I mean, the Celtics traded for them for a reason, so I I feel like they could be used in the future. I just don't know if that's going to be this season, and I think they both understand that and are okay with it. Jaden Springer also talked about the difference between uh, playing for the Celtics and playing for the Sixers. Uh, he said, here, it's more read and react. You're going out there playing based off each other, playing based off your teammates. You're going out there and just hooping, playing basketball. So I thought that was fun. They're funny to hear. I, I, I just think here, it's... Here, the fans believe we'll get past the second round of the playoffs. <laughs> I feel like it is a... You need to have a certain mindset to play for the teams where it is two stars and everybody else. Like, And, and obviously, the Celtics are 
like that in the sense that they have a lot of stars, but I feel like the fact that they have five guys who all need the basketball rather than just one or two means it spreads out even more, even amongst the role players. Like Hauser's averaging like nine a game. Pritchard gets to run the offense a little bit. Al Horford gets his shots up. Um, O'Shea Brissett has finds a role. I feel like the Celtics are very good at finding a role for everybody and letting them thrive in that role. Whereas like, I'm not like, it's not the player's fault. It's just the system that they've been placed in the system that works best for them. But like Embiid, Jokic, Luka, like Giannis, uh, uh, slash Dame, like these one slash two star teams are very, you play around them. And that's how we're going to play. And and as much as the Celtics have a clear hierarchy, I, I feel like the, the play style is not as much like that. Sorry. Tough time for Jan. Jan. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> control it. Couldn't stop it. <laughs> but in terms of the Celtics, your point is great. I mean, the fact that these guys have to play as a team, they almost have no kind of choice because everybody's so good. They have to trust each other. And they've done a great job of doing that this season. Everybody can pr- uh, step up. Have a great game, and nobody bats an eye. Derek White was the leading scorer against Chicago on Thursday. Porzingis has been a leading scorer. Jalen Brown has. Tatum has. I don't know if Holiday's been the leading scorer, but he's still cracked 20 plenty of times. And then the guys off the bench can also just pop off. I know there was a game where Pritchard was the leading scorer. Sam Hauser is pretty reliable to knock down a couple threes. Even Cornette hit double digits against the Bulls. Like The ball moves around really well for the Celtics. It doesn't feel like it sticks as much as it used to in years past. And that's a huge thing for these new players coming into the team. All it takes is like one good game to get some confidence, especially for somebody like the 21 year old Springer. Like, I don't know if he starts seeing the ball go in the basket off of some easy looks he gets from playing with a bunch of great players. He could really be a spark plug if they decide to use him. Tillman, same thing that field goal percentage being like 40% in Memphis is kind of subjective to, wow, Memphis had G League guys out there playing alongside him. While in Boston, he's going to be asked to do the same things that Luke Cornett is asked to do. And Cornett shoots almost 70%, probably over 70% now that we've come back from the break. Like, There's plenty of opportunity for both of these guys to play up and play better than they may be expected to. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Uh, I think both of them will have plenty of opportunities. You mentioned the, uh, you know, this player scored, had his big nights. This player's had his big night. It reminded me of a uh, trivia question we had this summer. Sam, how many Celtics players have scored a 20 point game this season? Uh, Tatum, Mm -hmm. Brown, Mm -hmm. Porzingis, Derek White, Holiday. Yep. Yep. Pritchard. Yep. Hauser has. uh, Mm, No. No, no Hauser. No Hauser. Surprisingly. Horford, yes. He has one. He has one. Am I missing any? Hold on. Don't tell me. I don't know. Well, I'm missing one. One. (laughs) Am I brain damaged? No, it's 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 a ha ha funny one. Got the start. Against the Raptors. Uh, It's hot. I don't remember. Luke, big oh, Luke. yeah, he, yeah. he did have that. That's right. <laughs> he did. How can I forget so, that? That was that? a huge That's game, and I've referenced it before. Eight, eight Celtics players, not Hauser. Hauser's season high is 17, uh, but he is averaging eight points on the season. So good for him. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the new guys, excited for to see them um, embodying the right mindset, I suppose. Like they're giving off the right mindset, which is a good thing to see. But, it's a fact. Uh, next thing. Uh, a former Celtic recently took to Twitter. Do you see this? I assume Isaiah Thomas. I see him. Uh, so a Twitter user on Twitter responded to something about the Celtics 15th roster spot and said the 15th oh, roster spot. You know what, what? the original one was? What? So the original tweet was Celtics do the right thing. 15th roster spot taco fall. And then somebody okay. responded. Somebody responded, the 15th spot realistically will not get a single minute in the playoffs. Why not add Isaiah Thomas? They added him. And that's no disrespect to him, but more of a nod. He deserves a ring for the effort and the grind he put in for us. His leadership is certainly going to help. Isaiah Thomas responded to it, said, my leadership alone would put this team over the hump. Um, I don't even have to play a single minute. Just give me a jersey, LOL. He's in. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so... (laughs) <laughs> One, I think the Twitter user is correct. I kind of think he deserves it. Sure. First and foremost, I've said that for years. I thought he should be part of whatever they're trying to do going forward. The retort to that has always been, One, 
you don't want to diminish his legacy with the Celtics. Fair. Mm-hmm. Two, the way Isaiah Thomas has uh, put himself across and in, in conveys himself is he's trying to get on a team where he can contribute. The Celtics would not be that. He would mm-hmm. not be doing anything for the Celtics except kind of being a mascot, which is great if that's what he wants to do. And it sounds like he wants to do that. Do I think his leadership alone would put them over the hump? I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm buying everything he's saying, but if he's willing to just come and hang out, I I mean, what else are you getting from that 15th spot? I don't see any problem. And I've always been on like the, what difference does it make if it's him or somebody else? That guy's not going to play. All right. So <clears throat> we've talked about this many times. I love Isaiah Thomas. You love Isaiah Thomas. We love Isaiah yep. Thomas. This kind of I don't like I don't like the reply. <laughs> I'm not. I think it's corny. Am I crazy? Is that mean, like it, 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 like it's just what weird. reply? Him Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas. Is, I think it's a little I, corny. I do think it is like, a little bit. I, with all due respect, like obviously I said Isaiah Thomas was one of my favorite players ever in Celtics history. Right, that was the peak, like the form formative years of my fandom. Like those were the first like. For you too, those were the first like this team is gonna make the playoffs and has a chance to make a deep run. Like those were the first teams. It was sick. Right. Saying my leadership alone would put this team over the hump. What hump? <laughs> they are like I, well, I get like they haven't won yet. Yeah, I know, and he did. With all due respect, he again, like but, but it's I just think like there's no could what you hump say to, to get over say all team? of Isaiah's teams overachieved. Sure, but like this team is the best team in the league by a six game margin. You saying like my leadership will put them over the hump. They got the leadership this summer. They got your holiday. They have Al Horford still. I, I don't know. I just think this, like, I don't even have to play a single minute. Just give me a Jersey also comes across as like, please let me play. Like, like, I don't know. I love Isaiah Thomas. I don't, again, I don't want this to come across like me hating on him. Just like, I, know, I, thought it was weird. I love it. I, th- I thought it was weird. Am I crazy? Like, I just feel like it's a lot. I think it's that, a little like, weird, it's but like, I don't know, man. Like we've, <laughs> talked about this for years it, it, it if they did this i don't think anybody would get mad at it no i i don't either and i but i just think the correct sponsor is like i appreciate you bro like yeah love my time in boston not please give me a jersey like i think i do like i do this just give me the jersey i don't even have to play a little bit please like that's how it comes across like you you could put a please in between every of these sentences and that it would read the same way i interpret that it as it's fair like that, it, like, it's just, i don't think you're out of line saying that but i i think there is no negative to this if he is if he is okay with not having a real playing role on the Do you South think he means it? Do you think he means yeah. I don't even have to play a single minute? I don't know if I believe it. I think he'd get annoyed that he's not playing. I don't think so. I think after when's the last time he played an NBA game? 2022? After two years two. of not playing in a league game, I think he wouldn't mind just being on a team that's gonna win a title or has a chance to win a title. Knock on wood. I don't know. I don't mind it. I'm not opposed to the idea. I'm more open to the idea now than I have been in the past because the roster is so solidified and so like solid. I don't know. I just, I didn't love the response. I thought it was a bit odd. Um, the over the hump part too was just like, can't get over enough humps. I guess sometimes you just got to keep going. All right. I'm like I said, I wouldn't complain to CIT back in Boston though. Uh, I definitely right. wouldn't. That's my guy. One of, one of the most incredible figures in like the team's history too. Like, I don't know, just the two and a half years of being a, I wrote about it this summer. hundred percent. Just unbelievable stuff. Mm -hmm. Shout out Isaiah. But, um, all right, let's go to the email here. Let's see what y'all have to say. I believe we only have a couple today. Uh, again, no in pop Nito comment. No wheel. What's popping. So no wheel today, but we will go to the email. Uh, and shout out RJ, because I think we've got a couple RJ today, baby. <clears throat> All right. What's popping? Speaking of Doc Rivers, uh, afternoon, fellas, with the Bucks deciding to elevate Doc Rivers, apparently against his switches from consultant to coach. Any word on uh, what the Celtics' own ex-coach, ex-ESPN analyst, Jeff Van Gundy, has been up to? That's all. Be well, RJ. No. Uh, he's just uh, he's just the organizational like uh, senior advisor, consultant. Um, he's at the game sometimes. I know you've seen him there both the times you got to go. Yep. Um, he's been at the practice facility a few times talking to Brad. I think he's genuinely just there. Like, yeah, I'll give my thoughts. I'll, I'll, you know, stay around the team. I know I'm pretty sure he's been up in Maine a little bit. Like, I I think it's just, he's around the team with his experience, ready to help where the team, if they need it. So I think that's about it. Yeah. 
I mean, he definitely has been around. That's a fact. He's around. <laughs> this is true. Other other than that, like, I don't think he's really up to a whole, mo- whole lot. Like, he's not Doc Rivers. He's not trying to uh, mm-hmm. be Brutus there to Caesar and, and get Missoula <laughs> thrown out. So he's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out Van Gundy. Uh, next email and last email from RJ. What's popping? A quiet winning game. Even guys, that was a nice, boring 17-point victory outside of the second quarter, obviously, but still. Um, if the Nets were a good way to ease into the All-Star break, the Bulls on the road were a great way to slide back into the groove. Even when the Bulls came back and took a halftime lead, it was more due to correctable errors like the Celtics overhelping on defense. Sure enough, the third quarter saw the Seas go back to locking down and getting defensive rebounds. Nice to see Tillman and Springer both get some time at the close of the game. And a special props to Pritchard, who tried to get Springer in his first uh, tried to get Springer his first Celtics points inside the last minute, but the pass got deflected. Mm-hmm. Best of uh, all, the Celtics looked relaxed and confident on both ends of the floor without taking anything for granted. Lastly, it's time to start the magic number count. That combination of Celtics wins and Cavalier losses that will secure Boston the best record in the East, not accounting for tiebreaker, is now 22. I didn't know that, but that's Celtics a good number to keep in mind. So it's probably 21. And since <laughs> this Cleveland is lost, so it's probably down to 20. It's pretty good. <laughs> I take those. This is, no, it's probably down. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of dope. That's <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, very fun to see. Uh, I was also, I was looking at the standings and we'll talk about it. <laughs> excuse me more when we get there but um actually you know what let's just go there now thank you rj for the email Pull we it appreciate off. it let's uh let's check out the nba standings now see what y'all or see what the league i should say got cooking um i saw an instagram post no oh, no and... that's never that's never good <laughs> no, no no it's good it's good instagram. <laughs> um and i'm never on instagram i don't know i like i'll just tune in like when i'm bored of tiktok uh i was lazy but the gap between the celtics and the Cavs. Seven and a half games is the same between the Suns in eight seed, or is larger than this gap between the Suns and the one seed in the West. Eight. And I one. saw that. That's crazy. <laughs> that is big boy basketball from the Celtics, but they could they could use the extra help to get over the hump. Uh, I'm very happy with the way the Celtics have played lately. I know that it was a little rocky there before the break. It was like a lot of like oh, I don't think they're playing relatively speaking the yeah. game. They kind of didn't get stops in the second quarter of the Chicago game, but besides that, they did a great job. RJ mentioned the third quarter. It's kind of remarkable that the third quarter has now become a good Celtics quarter after the whole first half of the the first quarter of the season, I guess. You could be like third quarter ass every single game. I was talking to um, Bill Sy about this because he wrote an article like seven stats to go with the seven game win streak they're on because that's their longest of the season. Third quarters haven't just been like, oh, it's kind of a good thing. Like they're killing teams in the third quarter like <clears throat> let me let me pull up the numbers uh, i screenshotted them so i can i can probably just look in my dms real quick thirds quarters uh last seven games uh i don't i think this was post bulls game um celtics are scoring 30 points on 52 47 splits 11 rebounds uh six and a half assists opponents Scoring 23 points on 40, 29 splits, nine rebounds, six assists. Like the Celtics are just whomping teams. <laughs> they're outscoring them by seven points. They're holding them to terrible shooting splits and they're shooting phenomenally. So like third quarters have gone from what are we doing to Celtics blowout real fast. <laughs> and I think that's a sign of good teams too. I feel like there are a lot of teams that you could point at throughout history that have won a title that have been excellent third quarter teams, specifically the Warriors were always great in the third quarter. They were a a team to fear coming out of the break in the 2022 finals. That was one of the big storylines leading into it is that they were just burying teams right after half. And that's the time to do it. You know, like, sorry, I was testing a button in screen yard. Apparently we're fucking around. I didn't know that was a button. I think I could do (laughs) it to us too. Well, you can do full screen. So that if I click this, sorry for audio listeners, we're testing stuff on YouTube. I can do that, and then I can do that. Put oh. you up there by yourself. I can do this too. It's and lonely. I, get rid of it. I know it's weird. I don't like it, but yeah, good for the Celtics for turning it around in that sense. But speaking of their lead in the East, um, Celtics seven game win streak, Cavs two game losing streak, which is good for the Celtics. Yeah, really? it's funny now that they're not playing Mickey Mouse teams. The Cavs <laughs> are all of a sudden not the best team ever. Who could have told not- you that? Donovan Mitchell's also has been hurt for like the doesn't last doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> I will say though, the guys hurt the bat, the entire rest of the top of the East though. Like the Cavs are still seven and three, but they lost two in a row past that 
four and six in their last 10 bucks, five and five in their last 10 Knicks, four and six in the last 10 Sixers, five and five in their last 10 Pacers. The Heat are seven and three, but even past that, um, five and five, five and five, three and seven. And Sam, look at what we have here. Look at the Wizards. They're giving us something. Double digits. (laughs) This this is a big spot for our Pistons, you know, after. I mean, if this is a serious prompt. If you were a Pistons Mm -hmm. fan, Take tanking out of it. Would you be proud of your team who started the team the year two and twenty-nine or whatever it was, two and thirty? Yeah. Voice for correct. not <laughs> being the last place team after that, that's pretty good. What was their record and at one point? Three and what? What was it? Three and what? I think they were two and thirty. Yeah, and then they were like three and thirty-three or something. They've won as many games in the last ten as they did in their first thirty-six. Like, yeah, they're back. as much as it's bad. That's still improvement. <laughs> like, still they are much better. And I'm not saying like, you know what? You know, I'm gonna look up Sam. Let me, let me hit stat muse real quick. Okay, Jaden Ivy record as starter this season. <laughs> Let's uh, would you like to take a guess? Let's see if it pops up. It's probably like at least five wins. Still not great. Six and twenty-nine. But comparatively, <laughs> they are that means on the bench. Six of the eight wins came as him being a starter. And the other two were, I think, the very start of the season, right? Like the first two games. They're two and fourteen with him on the bench. So mm. I'd say it's a bit of a difference. <laughs> um cool. yeah, Wizards. Now we can root against though. the Wizards every single night. Hell the yeah. Wizards, by I'm the in. way, who I actually do not like. Why? Just so for, I don't like pool. Fair. We'll talk about him later. Yeah. Um I do feel bad for the Magic. They, they, they had such a promising start to the season, and then they just kind of like stopped, <laughs> stopped being the super. Well, sick. they're seven and three in their last ten. Yeah, they're picking it back up, but they're only five games ahead of the Bulls. That's never good. <laughs> if you're five only games ahead of the Bulls, only five games above the Timberwolves. Wow, the Bulls are closer to the what is it? They're closer to the Knicks. The Bulls are closer to the Bucks than the Bucks are to the Celtics. Mm. That's phenomenal. <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, out West, Timberwolves, Thunder atop the Western Conference. Nuggets, one and a half games behind, as are the Clippers. Uh, Thunder have won four in a row, though. Mavericks are streaking right now. Seven in a row, eight and two in their last ten. Same for the Pels, eight and two in their last ten, though they did lose their one in a row. Mavs and Celtics tied for the longest one streak in the league. Uh, Kings and Suns kind of meh, five and five, six and four, respectively. Lakers, seven and three. Warriors back, eight and two. Uh, and the Jazz, our Jazz, Sam, two and eight in their last ten. Not very good. Feels like the same thing as last year. Mm -hmm. Just kind of good, then fell off a cliff. Yeah, not very good. Uh, I just don't think, I don't know. The Jazz, I know you were in on them as buyers, and I don't hate the idea of them being buyers. I think they just need to pick But they direction. didn't. They need to <laughs> pick a direction. They, they're kind of like yeah. the Bulls, except with a brighter future, if that makes sense. They're the Bulls if the Bulls had any assets at all. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I saw something on Twitter the other day, actually. Kenny Beecham, King of the Fourth Quarter, posted, who has a brighter future, the Nets or the Bulls? Genuinely. And you might say Nets, Brooklyn. but like really think about it. Really? Yeah. They have a billion draft picks. They have the Houston picks. But not their they own. Have Phoenix's picks. Phoenix isn't going to be very good going forward. They're fine now, but are they going to be better yeah. than they are this year, next year? I Probably get it. Not. I think it's I think it's closer than people realize. The only issue is the Bulls don't want to take advantage of the future they could potentially have. Because like Kobe. I think Kobe White's going to be the best player on either of those two teams in a year from now. You think so? You think he's better than Bridges? Bridges is just great, but what's Bridges' ceiling? Seriously. I think Kobe White can be an all-star. Do you think Bridges can be an all-star? Yeah, I do. Especially because he plays both sides of the ball. Do you think Bridges can be... I, I get. I get it. Bridges is very clearly better than Kobe Wright right now, but I just think, like, I don't think Bridges will ever win a playoff series in Brooklyn. No, I mean, probably not. I'm not sure. Kobe I White think Kobe White, I, but I think Chicago. Kobe White can win a playoff series in Chicago. Is my difference because I think if they strip down and rebuild around Kobe White, Pat Williams, Adesunmu, that's better. 
and I mean, obviously, unless the, the Nets decide to, you know, bring in an extra player and and X hear this and the other thing, like if they bring in like Trey Young, you know, what I'm saying like a one A 1A rather than Bridges being the one. Yeah, I, but they I'll put can, this they they could possibly do that. Like that is that's possible. fine. Let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I think Kobe White can be the best player on a playoff team. I don't think Mikael Bridges can be that right now, at least. Sure. I don't know. I just I I'm really high on Kobe White, and I mean I've said it a million times before. I think not taking X amount of first round picks for bridges is foolish because like, Might be foolish. I just don't, I, I I just don't, don't get the future in Brooklyn. I just don't get the vision, man. What are we doing? Like they're so clearly awful. Like what, what is their record right now? They are <laughs> awful, but they have, what is it? Five sets of pick or, or two sets of five picks from two different teams. Like you could, but by the time flip those, those picks, no, no, no. You could flip those picks now and get him uh, Trey Young or somebody if you if you really wanted to. I guess. I guess. I just mean, like, in terms of the players on the roster, I'll put it that way. I think the Bulls have a better f- potential future than they do. When you account you for the want, draft picks, I suppose. But I just, I don't know. If you I don't, want a bright spot for the Bulls is all of their bad money is tied up with guys that aren't going to be around. Yeah, <clears throat> Bridges is going to awesome. be making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Cam Johnson kind of makes a lot of money. It's very difficult for Brooklyn to put better pieces around these guys because they will be making more money. And that's where it's not as fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, I'm out on that. Actually, I, isn't Bridges' not... contract good right now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Talking out of my ass. But <clears throat> you can't, you can't pay Bridges. And then it goes back to your point where who would you rather pay? Probably Kobe White, but not that much money. You want to talk about good contracts, Sam? Was Miles Bridges years? right now. Miles Mikael Bridges right now makes 21 7, 23 3, 24 9, right? That's really yeah. good. Kobe White for the next three years, 11, 12, 12.8. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's insane. I mean, that's um, what happened to the Knicks with Brunson. And now they can bring in all these guys around him. Because it's, nobody on that team makes any money. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I, I'm I'm curious to see how the, it all shakes out. Uh, next to be a thing. Steve Kerr, Warriors, extension. Uh, Golden State. Speaking of contracts. Keeping Steve Kerr around. Two-year, $35 million contract. Highest paid coach in the league uh, ever at 17.5 a year. Uh, I know. That this aligns with Steph Curry's contract? I did. Steph Curry will be off the books in two years. And my response to that is Steve Kerr, genius, very smart man, very, very, very intelligent person, knows what he's doing. Because I think after those two years, see you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Both gone. I don't know if Curry's going to leave, but Kerr will leave. I think it'll be if Curry leaves, Kerr leaves. If Curry stays in Golden State, Curry ups. <laughs> yeah, but I just don't yeah. see Curry leaving. Then I think Steve Kerr will stay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How old is Steve Kerr? He's only fifty-eight. I thought he's older. <laughs> he looks younger, but I thought he. I was going to be like more surprised. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. Yeah, good for Steve Kerr. I, I mean, as much as they've been not as good as they'd want to be this year, like respect. Like you pay him. That's Steve Kerr, right? Like you got to give him the the respect money. It's the same why they pay Draymond. It's the same why they might or may not pay Clay. Um, same reason you pay Curry you know, $60 million when you know he's probably not going to be the same Steph Curry forever, even though he still magically is. Um, you pay guys like that. So respect to Steve Kerr. No problem with it. Warriors could be coming for a nice turn. And also, to go back to the Kerr money, there's no salary cap for the coaches. Not my money. <laughs> pay him whatever he wants. But, like, Kaminga's kind of playing well. I guess Andrew Wiggins is back. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah? I didn't see that. Th- things are like trending in the right direction for the Warriors. I mean, we did the standings check. They've won seven of ten. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Now that Wiggins is not out of shape, he's a good player. He's the type of player you want to have playing alongside stars. You could say the same for Kuminga. They're actually kind of using them in the correct way where Kuminga is not coming off the bench. Like, if you move off of Clay, maybe you can fill in some more salary with better talent than Clay and compete again. It's it's not mm-hmm. out of the realm of possibility because of how good Curry is. Yeah, I mean, you look at the the lineups they're running now. The Warriors record this season, they are 29 and 26. 
Kuminga yeah. as a starter, 17 and 11. It's pretty yeah, big difference. Bad. Pretty big difference. Too bad they didn't trade the Celtics. TP. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Who are they starting lately? I think it's Curry, yeah, Pods, Wiggs, Kuminga, and Draymond. E- yes. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Good for them. Dude, Pajemski, they found another guy. Like, that's so annoying. <laughs> Well, like that's the he's thing. Nasty. Like, why can't he just take on the role that Clay plays? I mean, he's kind of already doing that. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, going forward, they they found guys that are on cheaper contracts that they can afford to have next to Steph Curry. You know what's you know what's miraculous? It, it, there was this whole like when they had to trade Jordan Poole. It was like, oh, they failed the dual youth movement, old movement thing. No, they just didn't they just have the right players. Dickhead. Yeah, and now they have. Pajemski, Kuminga, and I think Moody's having like an all right season too, even though he's not playing quite as much. But like, right. they didn't fail the youth movement slash old movement. They just failed <laughs> which guy it was. And now they've got three guys who all look good. Like, Kuminga and Pods are combining for 28 this year. <laughs> That's pretty damn good. <laughs> and Pods so. is what? The 20 something pick? Or was he yeah. a second rounder? Pajemski was 19th overall pick. He's averaging 10, 6, and 4 on 46, 37 splits. I mean, I remember we talked about him before the draft. I know we liked him. We liked the fuckers. Fuckers. We, <laughs> Credit us, so we did like everybody. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, liking somebody, the Thunder do not like Boku anymore. Apparently, uh, Thunder have waived Alexei Pukachevsky or Pokashevsky. Uh, no longer on the team. Tough year for the meme players. Killian Hayes, Poku, be gone. See you later. Um, he was the 17th pick in 2020, and now he's no longer on the team. I remember Poku was a guy we briefly mentioned as oh GP maybe maybe, uh, but I, I think I well, hate now to say people it, are like Celtics 15 <laughs> roster spot maybe. <laughs> I think no. Poku might be cooked though. Uh, he's played in 10 games this season, Sam, uh, averaging six minutes a game. Would you like to tell me what he's averaging? No, I don't care. <laughs> but what I can tell you is. If he did not find a niche with this Oklahoma City Thunder group after being there the last couple seasons, I'm not convinced it's going to happen anywhere. They were starting from scratch after the bubble. He came in, had plenty of opportunity, and they just did not see anything they liked. He'll be on the heat, but right now... (laughs) I'm not I'm not sure anybody's going to go pick him up. He played uh, 24 minutes his first year, then 20, then 20, and now six uh, so far this year in 10 games. 1.2 points, one rebound, 25, 18 splits. So Pistons, call. not too hot. Not too hot for Mr. Poku. Those career high is 29. So shout out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he had like a good game against the Celtics when they... He had 19. Thunder snap the whatever. He had 19 against the Celtics, but not in that game. No, Uh, no, he had 19 in a Celtics win two marches ago, the 2022 March 19. I thought so too. So I I like brought it up. I'm like, I feel like he did play well against Celtics. (laughs) I mean, I think there's some team that will take him and take a flyer. I hope it's not Miami. Yeah, he's still only 22 years old. He's seven feet tall. Like somebody will find something for him, but main Celtics. Not right now. Uh, you brought him up earlier, Sam. Wizards have benched Jordan Poole. Uh, yeah. He is now coming off the bench. And in his first game off the bench, Jordan Poole put up a clean. Uh, actually played well. I was going to mock him. 21 points, uh, although he shot seven of 19 and two of eight. Three rebounds, three assists, three turnovers, minus 21 in the night in a 41-point loss to the Thunder. Uh, only played 23 minutes, though. So uh, Brian Keefe is mitigating his uh, ability to hinder the team a little bit, I guess. But uh, when asked about it, <clears throat> Jordan Poole said, uh, if there's any common sense with the situation, you should know how I feel, but I'm just going to come out, do what I can do to help the team, keep it moving. <laughs> I don't know. I also feel like there's like a layer to this where it's just like, yeah, you're an asshole, dude. Like nobody feels bad. Yeah, like I was Draymond yes. did not punch him in the face for no reason. It's it like is, out of dude. control. Draymond is like there's no way he just went up to one of his own teammates and hit him for no reason. How crazy is it? So at when that happened, at the time that that happened, we were fresh off 
Were we fresh off the title year or was it a year later? Title year. Fresh off the title year, right? And the immediate reaction, rightfully so, was, wow, Draymond's an asshole. What the hell did Poole do? Right? Effectively. Like, we, we knew there could have been some, some you know, tussling or some, like, I, oh, yeah, disagreement I don't know practice. If, I don't know if I ever was, like, the no general way consensus. The general consensus, though, was, wow, Draymond was probably majorly in the wrong here. Fast forward two years, it's like, dude probably deserved to get punched. <laughs> like, the general yeah, consensus. Top of the punch <laughs> in the face power rankings. Just He's number definitely one, up there. Perpetually. He's such an asshole, and he won't, like, admit it's his wrongdoing. He's just told people he has a ring. He doesn't care anymore. Like, this is the easiest guy to root against ever. That was a nuts quote. When he was just like, yeah, he's I got like, my ring. Now I, I have a ring. Out. Like, yeah. I don't know, The dude. worst part is he's not wrong. <laughs> the worst part is he does have a ring now. So yeah. Like, <laughs> Whose fault is it? I know. Yeah. Think about it often. Uh, I like, can't believe they let that happen. I was convinced Jordan Poole was going to lead the league in scoring this year. I really thought he was going to average like 30. Like I, yeah, I everybody did. He, be he was a big fantasy basketball pick. And I know. the thing about that is who's to blame but him? I know. Like how – I mean, we saw Kuzma go there and be really good. Kuzma's still really good. Yeah. Kuzma, yeah, Kuzma's averaging 22, 6, and 4 on 46, 34 shooting. His three-point percentage is not that good. But Poole's 16, 2, and 3.5 and on 40, 30 splits. <laughs> what are you going to do? I really just think Poole is – like maybe he's just telling you the truth. Like he literally doesn't care. If you watch him play, he plays the most nonchalant game of any NBA player. Mm -hmm. I saw that clip of him trying to dribble out to the three point line with his back to Chris stops, slowly turn around and throw up a three just to get blocked. Nobody else in the NBA does that kind of shit. And the thing about it is, he's not good enough to be even trying. He is in the biggest prove-it spot ever. And instead of going out there and trying to have some sort of personal pride, he just is like, hey, look how right the Warriors were. <laughs> it's special stuff, man. It's, it's next level fuckery. I guess is the word for it. Like, do you think he just doesn't practice? <laughs> I think he I would practices. not be shocked if you told me that Jordan Poole does the required team activities and then fucks off. Yeah, I just don't think he cares that much. I just think he's like, yeah, I I'm just hooping now. Fuck it, I'm getting paid. Whatever. Dangerous, dangerous, to crazy these guys. I don't, like, I don't know if he'll be. Do you think he gets another contract past this one? Probably not. Not if it keeps going like this. Here's the other aspect of this. If I'm another NBA player, let's say, let me spin the wheel of young guys, right? Uh, we'll just say somebody like, I want to say like Jalen Williams might be a terrible example, but he's a young guy on a good team who doesn't have all of the responsibility and he's able to thrive behind Shea and also somewhat Chet. When he's due for a new contract, I don't think OKC is going to hesitate to pay him. But mm -hmm. when you see somebody like Jordan Poole go out there and make an asshole out of himself, it's so much easier to question, <clears throat> how much should I actually devote to this guy? With the new CBA coming out, it's even worse. If I'm a young think, guy, I'm heated at Poole. I, I get it. I don't think teams will treat them that way. I, I don't I feel think like it's they'll, going to happen. But I know. I feel like I feel like this will get treated more as the Warriors made a mistake judging character versus we need to watch out because a young guy could just want to do whatever he wants. Um, I don't know though. I think the better example is Jalen Green. Okay, perfect. Versus if we're just spinning the wheel of Jalen's, um, <laughs> I, I think like hero. if if maybe. Not as much. I don't know. Do you know what I mean with Jalen Green, though? Like, the vibe of just, like, yeah, let me just get my bucket. Yes. Like, I, that's what I feel Absol like. That, with that's the Green. correct pick. I, I don't mean to throw Jalen Williams in the yeah, same I was category like, as Jordan Poole. Just their situations were similar, not their play styles. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But, like, now with Jalen Green and Shangun, I suppose, is the one above him. But, <clears throat> anyways, uh, speaking of shenanigans, Mr. Doc Rivers is just... Mm. It's special, man. It's special stuff. I found something new today, and I thought it was a joke, but I, I'm pretty sure it's real again. Um, this is real. He said this multiple times, by the way. So go ahead. 
sorry. Both of these things? There's two. There's two new ones right here. No. Uh, I'll read the first one. Oh, I didn't see the first one. Yeah. Per Rachel Nichols, uh, Doc Rivers came up to her and said, two other teams tried to hire him this season before the Bucks did. <laughs> I think one of them might have been Phoenix. Could and he be declined. wrong. No, no, no. He's saying this season. Oh, During the season, season. so I what, think Washington. So. I don't know. <laughs> and who else moved on? He from said their coach? the Nets, but that was after. No, that was I, after. I don't know. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna double Not check Toronto. that he didn't mean. Let me let me make sure that he didn't mean in general, because maybe it was in general. Because we know the Knicks. Um, he said Doc Rivers said two Mister teams tried to hire him before he took the Bucks job here. Let's watch the clip. All right, let's, pull him up. Let's take a look. Because, like, when when I read before the Bucks job, that reads as, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, doesn't read as, like, yeah. oh, the summer. Like, all right, let's take a look. Getting criticism right now. But he said this. I had committed to taking a year off. I had two other teams that had already called during the season that we wouldn't even during take the interview. Yeah. So, yeah, it was just, it was a lot. And, and So, yeah, during the season. Right, so like so that's what no Washington fired their coach after Doc got hired. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy what talking about? Needed I a don't coach. know. I don't. The, nobody did, but they, like it was in the context of like we're probably we might, could fire our coach. So maybe it was Washington. So maybe it was Washington. Brooklyn. Maybe it was Brooklyn. <laughs> that's weird behavior, though. Like the Doc is so. <sighs> just, I don't get it, man. <laughs> like you think the Lakers called him? No. You think Phoenix called him when they were sucking? Maybe. You don't think the Lakers called him when they were shit? I don't know. <clears throat> I feel like there's a weird LeBron thing there. Maybe. I don't think LeBron wants somebody that has some sort of NBA resume because he can just walk all over them. Like Darvin Ham getting the job. I mean, look at look at LeBron's coaches since Spolstra. David Blatt, Ty Lue, um, Vogel who was the only established one, and they won a title. Wasn't then, Walton his coach for a season? Was Walton the coach of the Lakers? I think for one year. But it was oh, the year well, that he was like – Throw him right in the – throw him in the pile. pile. Yeah, I'm yeah. helping you out there. <laughs> this isn't a dis- I wasn't disagreeing with you. I was and, trying and to give you more Vogel, ammo. Man. <clears throat> yeah. For the most part, it's been guys with very little experience coaching, and it's so – they he can just kind of have the final say. I don't think any inexperienced coach is going to be like, yeah, okay, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, maybe I'm sorry. They're not going to stand on the hill and die on the hill against LeBron. Doc Rivers might be, you know, labeled as ass, but he does have enough experience in the NBA where it's like, I've been around the block, buddy. Mm-hmm. It Since is crazy. Like Don't worry. About it. Yeah. Looking at this LeBron team, um, when he first got there with Luke Walton as the head coach, like, Obviously, it's not the same because players improve. Obviously, like the, they're not the players they were now. But like, if this was a te- like if this was a team in the twenty three twenty four season, LeBron, Kuzma, Ingram, KCP, Lonzo, healthy Lonzo, Reggie Bullock, Alex Caruso, Vicha Zubac, Josh Hart, that'd probably be a really, really, really good team. <laughs> like, yeah. It's insane how many like guys blossomed from there. Like Fee was on that team, Muscala, Mo Wagner were on that team. Mike Beasley was on that team. <laughs> it is crazy how like many of those people turned into good players <clears throat> since then. Uh, also, the second thing Doc said, uh, he was talking to Tim McMahon of ESPN. I even brought it up to Kawhi. Are you sure? I think Shea is going to be an amazing player. It may take a year or two, but I think you're underestimating how Shea is good. Uh, how good Shea is going to be. I didn't argue the decision or anything, but I brought it up and I just thought, is there any way we can do this deal without putting Shea in it? So this is the second time he has said this about Shea or about a player. Shea, this particular story. He also said on the Bill Simmons podcast before he got hired, because he was doing that show Mm -hmm. once every couple weeks. And he was sharing that anecdote because obviously Shea has been laying the world on fire. He's like, I always knew Shea was going to be good. And then I saw somebody be like, you literally buried him on the bench. (laughs) Let's see. Let's take a look. How many minutes was Shea playing under Doc Rivers? He just played his rookie season with the Clips, right? And then he was gone. His rookie season, he played he played 26 minutes a night, and he started 73 games. So I don't know if that's necessarily true, but um, it is just hearing him say, oh, no, I knew. I, he's This is why the Lakers should have hired him. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> you got to bring him on board. Um, I don't know if 
the other quote's true, but I, I saw something about him talking about Isaiah Joe. I, I, I can't find like a real source on it, <laughs> but I saw a fake quote that was like, I knew Isaiah Joe would be a sharpshooter. I told Nick Nurse not to trade him. And I think it was parodying this. It's just, it, it's all time, man. <laughs> he is. Can I ask you a question? I know you like Doc because he got the title. Is Doc Rivers a good coach? I don't think so. <laughs> What's he ever? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it, it, have we seen a player or coach ride the coattails of one championship more than Doc? Uh, There's got to be a player. I just can't think of one. Of the give me a head. second. I got to hate for yeah. a second. I got to think. <clears throat> That's fine. I'll filibuster. Right it's just like uh, at every honest? turn. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I was say. Dirk? Not really. No. Just like trying to think of guys that only won one. I know, but I'm trying to think. Lowry of like, will be one of those guys, I think, one day. No, no, I'm not talking even about like he was bad and he won a title. Like I'm talking about a guy who made a living off of one early career success. Do you know what I'm saying? Like somebody who stayed in the league, somebody who stuck with it and like got opportunity after opportunity after one. Like a non-perfect example is Bismack Biombo had like one good playoff series and then had like a contract yeah. past that and other shit like Gordon Hayward was an all-star and I know the injuries got in the way, but then he got like two more $30 million con like shit like that is like, what, are, what the fuck? What are we doing? Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> Doc's incredible, man. What a guy. He, the, the lying is generational stuff. There's right? definitely a lot more coaches that you could be like, well, what about that guy? <laughs> yeah. I like, I don't think Ty Lue is a bad coach by any stretch of it. He's but a he, phenomenal he won coach. the one title and then he really stuck around the league. Yeah, but he's like proved himself since then. Like he, that, the Clippers, like you can see the coaching adjustments he yes. makes. Like you can see it on a night to night basis. Has Doc made it to this conference finals since? No, Boston. Nope, never made it with the Clippers. Philly doesn't go. That is kind of crazy. Uh, no, he did. I, I'm sorry. He. Did I think it was Ty. Oh, I think that was. Yeah, it Ty, was Ty Lue. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doc leaves. They got it. They, they did it. <laughs> Special stuff, man. Special stuff. All right. Uh, let's go to the rat list here. Uh, would you like to kick us off? Yeah. Uh, start this one simple. Rat list, the guys. Uh, the guys the left me on red in the group chat this week. Oh. I was like, hey, what are you guys doing this weekend? Nothing. Because I'm trying to plan out stuff well in advance because, you know, we're, the two of us are very busy and then I've got other stuff going on. So I can't just sit there twiddling my thumbs until someone's like, what are we doing tonight? Yeah. You can't Fair. do it anymore. <clears throat> Those days have come and gone, sadly. Mm -hmm. Tough. Um, Ratless myself, and I know I've talked about this before, but I didn't realize the, the quantity to which the issue was. Um, so I was cleaning off my desk yesterday. I'm in the process of cleaning my room because it's really bad. And whenever I get Chick Fil A, which I haven't in a few days, <clears throat> oh, um, the streaks ended. I always get extra sauce, and you know what? I'll just show. I think I can move my camera to show how many sauces I have on my uh, on my desk. There's a little bit of other stuff, so it's it's still not like perfectly clean. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I counted a week or so ago, and it was like thirty something, and it's I've gotten it more since then. I know they haven't even been refrigerated. They're definitely I know. not all good. I know. I need to throw them away. I just I kept them on the desk for the bit, and then we gonna put them in a plastic bag and get rid of them. But yeah, that's that's when you know you. That's when you know. That's when you know it's a problem. <laughs> when you see that many Chick Fil A sauces on your, I'm never gonna that use them. I know I'm never gonna use Chick Fil A sauces I know. on your desk. I'll, I want to do do the bit. Uh, you. I'll let you do your next rat list, and I'll count them. So go ahead. Okay. Rat list. Or at least the government. It, it's tax season. I did my taxes yesterday. And I mean, I'm sure you've got this last year. They rob you blind. Because when you do freelance work, like the two of us, they don't really take taxes out of what you get paid. So you get paid the gross amount. And then you end up having to put, uh, pay when tax season rolls around. So not saying I wasn't prepared for it because I knew it was coming. But it's never fun when the figure pops up on tax uh, TurboTax there. Shout out them. And it was just, I mean, not fun. Not not as much money as I would have liked to have given away. Whatever. Too much money. 
I don't know. I, I should have had a coffee before we started. I've been fucking around the whole show. You won't believe how many I have. I think you have 45. Up. 58. Think the funniest number you can think of that I'm 69. Have. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible stuff. I started counting it like, nah, it's got to be 70, right? I, I really can't have exactly 60. Like, th- that's just the world mocking me, and fair enough. There's probably something else hidden, but um, <clears throat> that's all-time stuff. Uh, rat list Henry, and it's not his fault. It's my fault, so I'll rat list myself, but I'll, mm. I'll sub rat list Henry. Um, <clears throat> so we went to breakfast with my dad this morning at 930. Nice. Nice. Uh, however, I slept like shit last night. I had like indigestion because I ate food too late. It's my own fault still, but like I just couldn't sleep and I was, felt like shit. Um, <clears throat> we're going at 930. He was picking us up at 930. And obviously I'm like, Henry, you should wake me up if I don't wake up to my alarm, which I should wake up to my alarm, which is my fault. Correct. Like I, it hand up my bad. Yes. I didn't wake up to my alarm. But I felt like shit. Henry comes in. Jack, I'm sorry. It's 930. Dad's here. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm just like, all right. I get out of bed and so it was just and then like I came back home for breakfast and I just laid in bed for like three hours because like I, I was so tired I didn't want to sleep but you know you know the exhaustion you are when you don't wake up right I was just I was yeah so, man, I was so fucked and I, I've gotten like plenty of work done since then it's just like I was like I I've just been exhausted like my I've felt exhausted all day because I just woke up like shit um we need to have you on a regular schedule this summer i it's been a lot better lately i'm gonna start calling you at five because of no (laughs) it doesn't matter it won't matter anyway i don't get my ringer on so good luck buddy um uh it's been better though because talking sees like i have to be up at least a little earlier than i was previously so i'm like like slowly I would I, you can laugh at it all you want, but it is significantly better than when I used to wake up. Like, let's not act like it's not. You're living on Hawaiian time over there. I know. Well, it's not like I'm going to sleep. I'm sleeping for 12 hours. Like, I'm still getting I know. eight hours of sleep. It's just the wrong eight hours. But yeah. Ratless YouTube ads. So I was I was watching some highlights today. Now, mind you, this this highlight video was no longer than 10 minutes. Why am I getting three sets of fucking ads in a 10-minute video? Nowhere else, anywhere, where you consume media is throwing that many advertisements at you in such a short window. It doesn't happen. TV, they probably do once every 10 minutes for ads. Be serious, please, YouTube. But thank you for paying I was going to say, watch what you wish for. I have to place our ads and stuff. Uh, I do. But it's the NBA. I know. I know. (laughs) For our ads, I do. I do no. You can click like no non-skippable ads. So I only do skippable ads um, because I hate non-skippable ads. Um, And for full length pods, I do every 15 minutes or every 12. if It's like not in like an hour 10 because then it gets a little awkward with the ending. Um, So I usually do every 15. And then for videos under. 40 minutes for 40 minutes i'll do like 12 and 12 but anything under that i'll just do one in the middle and that's like in my brain however i have youtube premium so i've not seen a youtube ad in a long time which is very nice well, they got you <laughs> it's dude with the amount of youtube i watch it's i wonder if i can see how many hours i've watched on youtube <clears throat> do we know if that's a thing you don't want to tell everybody that i don't care I, I it's like my equivalent of tv like it's not like i watch tv and youtube like i just i only watch youtube speaking of tv Hmm. Do you have any more of that list? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm going to try to find this, but... Okay. <laughs> yeah. While you look for that, I'll do a rat list. Rat list, Love is Blind. Now, are you familiar with Love is Blind, Jack? Uh, vaguely, yeah. So if you're not familiar with Love is Blind, it is a dating show where they have... I don't know how many people. I, I'm not watching it. I was mm-hmm. showed this show by my girlfriend she wanted to watch it when we went away last week i forgot to mention this so we're watching it they have let's just say 24 people i don't know how many there are there's a bunch of people they have them all in little rooms and they will talk to each other with a wall between them and they're trying to develop a connection and prove whether or not love is blind sure the the rat list one i think the show is kind of whatever 
Like, I, I don't care for those kind of shows. But the rat list is that I'm getting texts about how upsetting this show is. She's watching it and is like, I can't believe this. They dropped the wall and all of a sudden he's not interested. Really? You can't believe it? <laughs> yeah. With all due respect, like, that's why love isn't blind. Like, that's why it's, that's why well, dating apps. The other part of that is, like, I don't like, everybody has something that they like. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean everybody has the same level of attraction to every person. It's subjective. But to say that looks don't mean anything to anybody is just a bunch of crap and you're putting i mean i these people all sign up for it but you're making them look bad because they're not interested and you know they have to like propose before they can see the person no that's crazy <laughs> stop watching this stuff it's like the number one show on netflix quit watching it oh. uh yeah that's nuts i can't look at my all-time watch history or my watch time but i can tell you it tells me my past today in like x amount of days uh <laughs> for context i i keep it on when i sleep so it does auto play sometimes but the last That's seven days sleep respect the last last seven days i've watched 22 hours and 26 minutes of youtube that's a lot <laughs> but if you're falling asleep to it it's not that much. yeah and i it's just what i have on my second monitor while i'm working so it's like background most of the time like i put on a podcast yesterday and i just like let it rock so i see there's some context to it but anyways that's all i got for rat list um yeah is that all you got that's all i got w well thank you all for tuning in we appreciate it once again please like and subscribe we'd appreciate it very much comment what's popping on the video check us out on podcast platforms all that good stuff and I'll let Sam take it home. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We are coming at you Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday with the full pods like this one. You also have Talk and Seas live Monday, Friday. There's a Wednesday app that drops, but it's not live. You can also find our game recaps the day after any game. Sometimes they're embedded into the pods. Sometimes they are not, and they're, own, they're on their own. And then every single game, we're live a half hour before, so come hang out. It's a ton of fun. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. Follow us there for the audio pods and game recaps. You can also reach out to us via email, hbtcpod at gmail.com. I'm sure you guys have thoughts on whatever you watched last night. I sure hope it's good. And we will read them Monday when we record for Tuesday morning. So we love to hear from you. Please send us emails. You can also find us on socials at how about them sees twitter instagram tiktok facebook is just the name of the podcast our streams are there and on youtube and on twitter jack's twitter's at jack's money nba mine's at sam of france nba that's it for us Bye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.